Hey, this is a different video than what I've made recently because today we're going to be talking about mid-game goals. The definition of mid-game can vary. Some people consider it around 1500 total level, others consider it even later than that. Personally, I'm over 2k total and have a few 99s and I would still consider myself at the end tier of mid-game. End game for me is when you can do all the bosses efficiently in the game and complete raids in my opinion. But besides that, we're going to be talking about mid-game goals for making a main account slash making your account better. I know a lot of my viewers are in the mid-game or even just starting, and the game can be overwhelming because of the freedom of choice and how big the game is, and you might not know what to do. And I know this video has been done before, but people always need guidance, so there you go. We're going to be going over 15 items that I researched and found extremely useful. These aren't in any specific order, I'm just doing them in what came to mind first. So the first goal we're going to be going over is Fairy Rings. This should be one of the earliest unlocks on your account because of how useful it is. Being required for many clues and being able to get you almost anywhere in the entire game in an instant is extremely useful. To unlock Fairy Rings, you will only have to have partially completed the quest Fairy Tale Part 2, which only has a few prerequisite quests needed to complete and lowish stats required as well. Number 2 we're going to be talking about Graceful. Graceful is that white, or sometimes other color, armor you see pretty much every player running around wearing, and that's because of how important it is. Graceful is achieved from doing the agility skill and collecting marks of grace from rooftops. Each individual piece of Graceful will increase your rate of run energy restoration, adding up to 20%, while the full set gives you 10% extra, giving you a total of 30% run regen. Not only that, it also reduces the weight of pretty much every item in your inventory, allowing you to run farther with more stuff. This is extremely useful for skilling, questing, farm runs, and other things. You can also recolor the graceful to make it look cool if you'd like. I have the dark blue set, but that's pretty annoying to get. The common route for getting this outfit is doing Canifis agility for the marks, and then people move on to Sears Village at level 60 because of diminishing returns as you get higher levels with lower courses. Next is the Dragon Defender. This is the second best defender in the game, behind the Avernic one, but that's more of a high mid game slash end game item due to it being around 40 mil. But what is the defender even? The dragon defender is an offhand item used for melee combat. It is used for its high attack and strength bonus and generally will be the best in slot item you bring for melee for a long time. To obtain the dragon defender you must kill cyclops in the warriors guild using tokens you get at the guild to move progressively up from bronze, iron, steel, black, mithril, adamant, rune to dragon. To enter into the warriors guild your attack and strength levels must add up to at least 130 combined together. So yeah, number 4 is going to be the Fighter Torso. I avoided getting this one for a while, because to get it you must redeem points from the Barbarian Assault minigame, and I avoided it because I heard horror stories of this minigame, uh, that it was difficult and annoying and just very frustrating, but I'm glad I finally went for it because once you learn it, it's really not that bad. And if you hate the minigame so much, you could technically pay a stupid amount of money, somewhere around 30 mil, to get carried through it. But I would recommend just learning it. But what even is the Fighter Torso? The Fighter Torso is one of the most popular and frequently used armor for melee combat and training. And that's because it's tied in strength bonus with the Bando's Chestplate and Inquisitor's Chestplate. But only costs you time instead of money and you can get it very early on, especially for Iron Man. I would say this one is a must have for all accounts, if you can get it because it's so good. I'm over 2k total and several 99s, and I'm still using this thing. Down the line, upgrade to a Bando's chest plate though. Number 5 is going to be the Rune Pouch. You have 3 options for getting this, you can buy it straight up as a note from the GE, which is advised, unless you're an Iron Man, but if you're an Iron Man I would recommend getting it through 75 last man standing points, but if you're hopeless with PKing, you can spend 750 slayer points, but I just can't stomach that. The Rune Pouch is an item you keep in your inventory that can store up to 3 runes inside of it. Very useful for teleporting around the game or keeping alchemy runes inside of it. A tip I can give you is always keeping Law, Dust, and Steam runes in the pouch if you're a main account and that's because it'll pretty much give you every teleport on the main spellbook at the same time so you'll just be chillin'. Next is going to be the construction skill. Kinda of vague but there's two ideal points for construction. Point 1 is 50 construction where you can unlock the portal chambers in your player owned house which allows you to pretty much make any teleport in the game permanently inside your POH. This is especially useful because you can put things that aren't on the normal spellbook like the Archaeus library teleport, Canifis teleport or even Lunar Island teleport. And now the second ideal point for construction, in my opinion, 
is the most important and useful thing you can do progression wise on your account in the entire game. And that's 83 construction. At 83 you can make the ornate restoration pool which restores run energy, health, prayer, and special attack. The ornate jewelry box which contains almost all the skill necklace teleports in the game. The occult altar which allows you to change your spellbook to lunar, standard, and ancient. And you can build a fairy ring in your house which is the closest one from any teleport being only 5 tiles away from your POH teleport. You can even build a spirit tree and wilderness obelisk inside your home, but getting this one can cost you upwards of 50 to 60 mil. I would say this is the greatest decision you can make, and it's the greatest decision I ever made. It makes the game so much more enjoyable and hassle free because you can go anywhere in the game and do everything right from your house. Number 7 is going to be Void Knight Equipment. Void Knight Equipment is achieved from doing the pest control minigame, everyone's favorite minigame. Yeah, I'm kidding. A full set of Void Knight armor costs around 850 pest control points excluding the mace and that's not including the other two helmets, but I would recommend you get all three helmets being mage, melee, and range. The set effects for Void is different depending on what attack style and helmet you're using. Mage gets 45% increased accuracy, and melee and range get 10% increased to damage and accuracy. Void is popular and useful in a lot of situations, whether it be doing Vorkath, Raiding, Tob, Wilderness below level 20. This is a popular mid-level goal and you should be able to get games for the minigame pretty fast. I personally wouldn't bother with it until you can do the Veteran difficulty for 5 maximum amounts of points, and for that you need over 100 combat level, so this one can wait. And then more towards the end of the game, you can additionally go for Elite Void, which is more points you have to farm, and you need the Hard Western Province Diary, but this grants you prayer bonus and additional damage. Number 8 is going to be the Slayer Helmet. One of the best upgrades for Slayer. To obtain a Slayer Helmet, you must unlock Malvelt, Malvalent, Mal Malvalent, Mal Malvalent Masquerade for 400, <laughs> for 400 Slayer points. The Slayer Helmet, when worn on a Slayer task, provides a 16% boost to melee against monsters assigned as your task, and if you imbue the helmet, it will give you 15% to boost range and mage on the task as well. These bonuses can be gotten from the Black Mask that you can just buy on the GE, so the Black Mask is actually pretty similar to the Slayer Helmet, so use that until you get the Slayer Helmet. The upside of the Slayer Helmet is it provides all of the different Slayer headgears for different tasks and areas, such as earmuffs, spiny helmet, nose peg, etc. Next is going to be the quest cape. This one is odd in the sense that I don't actually mean you need the quest cape itself, but it's a very good goal to have because it motivates you to complete every quest in the game, which can unlock a tremendous amount of content and give you tons of perks, XP's, and rewards. Since the help since the release of the quest helper plugin in Runelite Plugin Hub, questing has never been easier. It shows you everywhere to click what to bring, and what to say in the dialogue. Like I said, you don't actually need the cape itself, but it's more like what it entails. I have about 98% of quests done, sparing a few because I'm lazy, and I never would have done that without the quest helper, so stop being lazy and do your quests. Number 10 is another cape, but it's not the quest cape, it is the fire cape, an iconic item in RuneScape because as a kid everyone wanted one but was never good enough, but in hindsight, getting the fire cape is pretty brain dead, unless you're a new player, of course. To get the fire cape, you must complete every wave of the fight caves and eventually get up to Jad and defeat him. This can be hard for a new player, but I promise it's easy, watch a video, take your time, it might take a few attempts, but you'll get it. Jad's the hardest part, so don't give up. But what is even the point of the fire cape? The fire cape is the second best melee cape in the entire game, only outclassed by its brother, older brother, the infernal cape. Once you get this thing, it's pretty much the only cape you'll ever wear for anything melee related. Number 11, another cape item, the Ava's Accumulator. Easier to get than the fire cape by far, and it's the ranged equivalent. This one you just get from questing and having 50 range. The accumulator picks up range ammunition as you fire it, and it also gives you the second best ranged attack bonus in the game, behind its big brother, the Ava's Assembler. All you need to complete is Animal Magnetism, which only has a few other quests, prerequisite quests, and very low skill requirements. Number 12 is going to be the Fremenic and slash or Dagonoth King Rings, being Archer, Berserker, Seers, and Warrior. Generally, the first three are the most commonly used, and Warrior isn't used too much. Each of these rings are useful for the three combat styles with Archer for ranged, obviously, Berserker for melee slash strength, and Seers for mage. These can be imbued to make them even better. It depends on what you're doing, as some rings could be better than these, like Ring of Recoil slash Suffering is better than the Seers ring for Zora, but generally these are the rings you'll be using. 
These can be obtained from killing the Dagonoth Kings, or you can just buy them on the GE. Number 13 is going to be Barrow's Gloves. If you're going for Quest Cape, you'll be getting these bad boys. So this is probably the thing you should focus on before most things on this list, and that's because it gets tons of quests done, and because of how good the gloves are. Of all the gloves in the whole game, it gives the second best range bonus, second best mage bonus, and second highest strength bonus. And for that reason, I would highly recommend rushing these so that you don't get made fun of for using a combat bracelet anymore. Second to last is going to be the god capes, which are magic capes achieved from the mage arena mini quest. You only need one of these, and I go for Zamorak because it looks the coolest. The God Cape offers the second highest magic attack bonus of any cape, only being outclassed by the imbued variant of it, which is achieved from doing a harder Mage Arena, being Mage Arena 2, which you can work towards, but is more to mid-mid game slash end mid game. This can be gotten fairly early into your account, but watch a guide on how to do this as I believe you have to go into the wilderness, so you don't want to get PK'd. And finally, the last thing we're going to be talking about, I only meant for this to be 10, but I somehow stretched it to 15 because things just kept coming to me. We're going to be talking about God Books. God Books are books you can fill with pages from Horror of the Deep Quest. A completed God Book provides bonus to attack and defense depending on what god it's for. This is pretty easy to get on a main because you just buy the pages from the GE, but it can be extremely annoying for Iron Man since you have to do clues to get the pages. There's six books totals being Balance, Darkness, Law, War, Holy, and Unholy, but I'm pretty sure the only ones that are used are Darkness for Magic, Law for Ranged, and Unholy if you don't have a Defender. These are also useful because of the five prayer bonus you get from wielding it, which is in the shield slot if I didn't mention. And that concludes the 15 items and or things you can do that I think are essential for the mid game and like what make your account an actual main account and not a niche PKing account or something of a sorts. Now I know this idea has been done a few times, I know other YouTubers have done it, I'm not the first by any means, so I don't know if this is beating a dead horse. I didn't watch any of their videos because I didn't want it to seem like I'm stealing ideas. I just did my own research on common sense for mid game items, I feel like everyone should have these. No shade at other people if the video is similar to theirs. Everyone needs guides, that's just how she rolls. Thank you so much for watching, like and subscribe if this helped, and I'll see you next time.